Welcome to a third example on how to solve a second order homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation. So if we take a look at our differential equation, the first thing we should recognize is that we have a second order differential equation and also that it's homogeneous because the right side is equal to zero. But more importantly, because a differential equation fits this form here, we have a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. For a Cauchy-Euler differential equation, for each term, the degree of the coefficient is equal to the order of the derivative. So for example, looking at this first term, notice how the degree of the coefficient is two, the term also contains the second derivative. Looking at the second term, we have x to the first, so the degree of the coefficient is one, and the term also contains the first derivative. The third term is a constant times y, and then again, because we have a homogeneous differential equation, it's equal to zero. So because we have a second order Cauchy-Euler differential equation, we can solve the differential equation using this auxiliary equation where the values of a, b, and c come from the differential equation and then based upon the type or nature of solutions to this quadratic, it will affect the form of the general solution. So looking at our differential equation, let's start by identifying the values of a, b, and c. a is equal to one, b is equal to negative seven, and c is equal to positive forty-one. So now using the auxiliary equation, am times the quantity m minus one plus b times m plus c equals zero, we'll substitute the values of a, b, and c, and then solve for m. So we would have one m, or just m times the quantity m minus one, and then since b is negative seven, we'd have minus seven m, and c is positive forty-one, so plus forty-one equals zero. Let's clear the parentheses, so we'd have m squared, then we'd have minus m minus seven m, that's gonna be minus eight m plus forty one equals zero. Well unfortunately this is not factorable since there are no factors of positive forty one that add to negative eight, which means to solve this we'll have to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula notice that a is one, b is negative eight, and c is positive forty one. So we'll have m equals negative negative eight plus or minus the square root of b squared or negative eight squared minus four times a times c where again a is one and c is forty one. All this is divided by two times a or two times one. So now let's begin to simplify this. We'll have m equals eight plus or minus the square root of, this will be sixty-four minus one hundred sixty-four, so that's negative one hundred, divided by two, well this would be the same as eight divided by two, plus or minus, the square root of negative one hundred would be ten i, so ten i divided by two, so we have m equals four plus or minus five i. So because the auxiliary equation has complex solutions, this will be the form of the general solution. For a quick review, the types of solutions to the auxiliary equation do affect the form of the general solution. If we have two distinct real roots, this is the form of the general solution. If we have two real equal roots, this would be the form of the general solution. And then finally in our case, if we have complex solutions or complex roots, this is the form of the general solution. So going back to our example, using this form of the general solution, where the complex solutions are in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, we need to be able to recognize that in our case, alpha is equal to four and beta is equal to five. So let's go ahead and perform this substitution into our general solution on the next slide. Our general solution will be y of x equals x raised to the power of four, x to the fourth, times the quantity c sub one cosine of beta times natural log x, which will be five natural log x, plus c sub two sine 
beta times natural log x or five natural log x. This would be our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.